Okay, everyone, welcome. Thanks so much for joining. We are we are really excited to have you all here today and we have some great content lined up. Um, I wanted to just quickly introduce the speakers. Uh, today's speakers are going to be John Liebler, Mark Hugley, and Rob Mitzwicki. And John has been, um, he's worked in the retail luxury and fine jewelry industry for over 30 years and now works with retailers all sizes to enhance the customer experience. Mark Ublay is the VP of marketing at 3Kit and he spends his time uh, marketing for PayPal as well and has spent the last decade being an entrepreneur. Rob is the senior sales manager at Proximity Insight and he has over 10 years of engineering experience and over six years of retail software leadership for global implementation projects. So thank you all for taking some time out of your day to uh, join our webinar today. And with that, I'd just like to quickly go over the agenda. We're going to dive into ultimate virtual selling to begin with. John is going to go into some very deep industry insight. We'll meet the three kit and proximity insight teams. And then we're going to get into some demos. We'll show you an engagement ring demo along with the watch 3D configuration demo. Um, and we'll leave some time at the end for some Q&A. So please write any questions in the chat and we will be recording the session to send to you all afterwards. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Proximity Insights CEO, Kathy McCade to get us started. Kathy? Hello and welcome everybody. I'm delighted to be able to announce um, our partnership. It's a very exciting start to the new year for us. Um, you know, I think the combination of 3Kit, Proximity Insight, coupled with the power of Salesforce makes a very compelling customer journey. Um, and it very much speaks to our core of being able to, yeah, you know, really deliver and create exceptional customer experiences. So one of the things that we'll touch on today is very much around the power of personal um, and how that really drives, um, you know, a very sort of very important today, more important than ever before, I would say, and really being able to then deliver Sort of an increase in digital experiences um, to make it hugely compelling for customers today, bring it to life, really augment that digital experience. So I'm delighted to be able to hand over to John Liebler, who's going to provide you with some great industry insight around why this is such an important time to be looking at virtual selling and augmenting your digital experience. Thanks, Kathy. I appreciate it. Uh, just nod if you can hear me. Yes. Outstanding, thank you. Uh, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning, I've been in retail, around retail for 30 years. And obviously the level of disruption and change in the last 12 to 15 months has been significant uh, and it's affecting everybody. But we have some choices, right? We can look at these as ob obstacles or we can look at them as opportunities. And uh, the best way to do that is look at them as opportunities. Opportunities to reimagine one's business model, uh, an opportunity to evolve and innovate as much as you possibly can. The customer's expectations are changing and it's important for us as retailers to change with them. Uh, but before we get into that, I think it's important to note that while there is quite a bit changing, there are certain core beliefs in human behavior that will not change and we should be aware of them as we start to evolve and, and, and we wanna remain uh, steady in those in those core behaviors. And the first is the need for human connection. Uh, you know, it'll never go away. There's uh, something called Maslow's hierarchy of needs and it shows that socialization is only behind food, shelter uh, as our greatest need. We will always wanna socialize and we'll always be around about, uh, other people. And if you didn't know it, you know it now because COVID has got us all trapped in our homes and, and, and wanting any level of socialization as we can I find myself now sort of loitering at the end of my driveway, waiting for some random neighbor to walk by with his dog so I can chat him up and just have a conversation. Uh, obviously, I'd rather be in a room with 150 people today than, than talking on a Zoom call. Uh, the, the, the other thing that, that has not changed is how we communicate. And I don't mean the method by which we used to communicate. Obviously, we text more and we email more and we use a variety of other, other tools to communicate. But the way we convey our emotions through communication hasn't changed. There is a general rule that 7% of communication is the words. The other 93% is the tone of our voice and our body language. 
And when we rely on texting and email as our sole form of communication, we lose almost all of the intent. This often leads to misunderstanding, it leads to confusion, and can often create conflict. Now, couple that with the way adults learn. Adults learn primarily by seeing, by listening and discussing that conversational uh, uh, discussion, and by doing, by touching, by feeling, by try it on, by driving. And, and the more we don't get into stores, so much of that is lost. So as retailers, the more we can appeal to all three learning styles, whether in-store or virtually, uh, in our customer interactions creates a richer, more customer experience. And the other thing that has changed or has not changed and will never change is the need for trust. Consumers will always want to trust the brands, but more importantly, the people that represent the brands, the one-on-one -on -one conversations. The better we communicate, the better we listen, the better we respond to our customers, the more they will trust us. Uh, I read a stat recently that 35% of customers uh, uh, lost their temper with a customer service rep last year, and 24% of them went on to post those bad experiences online. Next slide, Svetla, just a heads up. What's that? Next slide, just we oh. have slides. For you. I thought people were just, just listening to the sound of my voice and the slides became unimportant. Uh, every experience with a customer, we pay a lot of money, right, to get that one customer to come see us. We have got to make them as perfect as possible. Uh, and I've always believed that the success of a retailer is all about establishing that trust and building that long-term relationship with that customer. So what has changed, right? Well, obviously, and if we're doing slides, this would probably be the time to go to the next slide, would be the technology adoption. COVID has accelerated the adoption curve. And if you're familiar with the adoption curve, it talks about innovators and early adopters uh, and laggards. Well, you're either an innovator now, an early adopter, or just simply left behind. You can't blink as a consumer or as a retailer or technology has changed. What may have been considered groundbreaking years ago is likely considered table stakes today. Uh, and we're seeing this in a variety of ways, but I think the, the clearest is the, the acceleration of the technology adoption among Generation X and, and the boomers. Uh, it's, it's sort of forced that those generations to adopt. Uh, you know, it's, it may sound silly, but, you know, as I remember a year ago, literally trying to talk my, my mother-in-law who's 75 on how to use her new iPad. And now she's doing Zoom calls and she's, she's um, um, putting them on my Outlook calendar so we can click as a family. I mean, that is such a change in behavior that we as retailers need to understand and we need to adapt to. Uh, the option for virtual appointments. This was a rarity a year ago. Uh, now it's an expectation. Uh, last year at this time, 35% of consumers were comfortable with virtual appointments. Now it's over 70%. Live chat's gone from 42% to 77%. So if you as a retailer have not taken advantage of these emerging technologies, uh, you, you risk being left behind. We are also seeing a rapid acceleration in the consumer expectations around Omnichannel. So simply put, customers expect the same level of service and information across all channels. If I go online, if I do a chat, if I walk in a store, if I'll fill out a form, all of that information that's being captured, the customer expects us to use it when they want us to use it. If I put something in my shopping cart online and I walk into a store, I expect that store to know that interaction. If I give my account number to an agent on a, on, a, on, a, on a text and then we go to a live call, I expect that new agent to know what my account number was. Purchase and return information, it has to be available everywhere. What's important though, is that we don't abuse it. So understanding customers' personal preferences is paramount as to when to reach out to them and what channel to reach out to them on. Customers want tailored, personalized experiences. Know me, know what I like, know how, how I want to shop, and know how I want to be communicated to. And they want self-service solutions, but be available when they need help. Customers expect education. Um, they want to have the resources that they can reach out, educate themselves about your products, and they want associates with deep technical knowledge who can accurately answer their questions. They want to learn, but then they want to be guided and not sold to. They want us to be their trusted advisors. Excuse me, I take my happy drink. 
we are also seeing retailers, and this is very interesting, more and more leveraging their in-store teams. So where there was a bifurcation between stores and CX and other parts of the businesses, because of COVID, they're now using their store teams. Traffic has slowed, which is the bad news, but the good news is that conversion has gone up because customers have far more intent and basket sizes spiked. So we have this payroll in the store that is often not being used. So how do we create a more efficient use of that payroll? Well, you know what? Provide the teams with the tools so they can do customer service work. They can do buy online, pick up in store. But what's, impo what's important is that we give them the tools and the training so they can act as those agents. Yeah, that's Taylor. super important. Yep. That's super important, John. Yeah, good, um, good call out there. You know, kind of creating that more engaging environment where you can communicate in real time, that's critical. Um, even online, you know, and that mix between online and in-store, uh, I think is a thing that many people on this call are probably struggling with. So it's a great call out. Yep. Uh, well, and I think the last thing, and thank you for Mark for jumping in there, is that the beauty of this is that impl um, implementing this in innovative technology is now affordable. You know, when I first started years ago, it, it was millions and millions of dollars to, to custom build your own platform and try to implement it and the change management was was very very challenging now with providers like you and with proximity you can get this product and it's speed to market it's not terribly expensive and the user adoption is very high so i think that's a great great time mark for me to turn it over to you and let you show excellent. show everybody what you've got excellent thank you john yeah i really appreciate that um next slides fella Great. Hey, everyone. Mark here from 3Kit, ahead of our marketing team. I'm joined by Tony, uh, who's a lead solution engineer for us. I'm going to just give you a quick breakdown on who 3Kit is, what we're hearing in the jewelry marketplace. And then honestly, the most important thing from our side is Tony. And Tony will share the kind of things that we're working on and why it's relevant to you, uh, jewelers, watchmakers, uh, luxury of folks of all kind. So quick background on 3Kit. Uh, we actually got our start about 15 years ago. Uh, we were originally a software designed for Hollywood films. So our technology has been used in Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, Avatar. That's extremely high quality 3D. And so that's where our roots really stand. Um, around 2016, uh, various software came out that let people show 3D online really easily. And at that time, we really started to scale our company. And today we are a world leader and if you wanna show your product online and customize it or configure it in 3D or in 2D, which are images or in augmented reality, we are the world leader for doing that at scale. So we can go to the next slide. Why do we do this? And why hopefully all of you joined this webinar is the number one reason someone is gonna buy your ring or buy your watch online is how does it look? This is an extremely subjective purchase. And if that thing looks, that watch or customized ring or customized jewelry, if they love the way that looks and they make that emotional connection with how it looks, that's the number one reason. And so we are, the, the number one reason 3 can exist is to create that absolutely stunning visual. We can go to the next slide. There's two main things that are really relevant for everyone on the call here that 3 kit does. We have a 3D configurator product, which you can see here is a, you know, a Rolex, apologies that that GIF might be a little bit laggy, but you'll see in a minute here with Tony, kind of the amazing visuals there and then virtual photographer. And the beautiful thing you get with 3Kit is extreme customization. And so you don't have to model or take a photo of every single model of that ring or every single model of that watch. You know, our platform knows what gold looks like. It knows what rolled good look, goals look like. It knows how light bounces off diamonds. And so it's automatically able to configure those things for you. And Tony will jump in in a minute to talk about that. Before that, so next slide. Um, before that, I wanted to get into typical challenge and, and John or anyone on the proximity team, if, you're, if you see things on here that jump out or if anyone on the call, if any of these things are, are problems or opportunities that you're seeing in your business, speak up because what we're seeing in your industry is that it is not simple to show the metal color, the finish, the effect of light on that diamond every single time and have very standardized, beautiful photos or even a configurator of that. You know, another thing that we're hearing is a lot of folks here, 
might have spun up their own homegrown configurator. And what we're hearing is that's extremely expensive, it's time consuming. And if you ever want to change that configurator, you're going to run into a lot of problems. Let's say adding you know, a new metal or removing a feature and sort of having that experience be working really well, is, that's a difficulty. Um, you know, John yeah, Mark, or any- I just, Yeah, I yeah, just, that first one, right? Clearly showing the metal color finish effect of light, you know, that is never more apparent when you're showing diamonds, right? And the way the light just dances off a diamond, if you've been in the jewelry business a long time, it's, it's all very unique and customers want to see that. And what you don't want to do is sell something virtually and then have it come to them and not match up to their expectations. So having that ability is critical, especially around jewelry and diamonds. Definitely. And one other thing I'll add in here is the ability to combine two different products that you have and put them into the same scene. Um, sometimes that's with like a bracelets, let's say, or with, let's say, um, an engagement ring and a wedding ring. Stacking and being able to stack different products together um, is something that our technology allows as well. So, you know, I, I think this is the last slide for me, Svetla. Um, can you go to the next slide? I just want to make sure it's the going on to the demo. Excellent. I want to hand it over to Tony. Uh, Tony's the one who can get everyone here on the line and make sure everyone's to turn on your video. And uh, I'd like to hand it over to Tony to go through, you know, what we're working with and what this experience looks like from the three kit and what we can offer you all. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. And so with that being said, um, there are those two kind of key use cases that Mark was telling us about on that last slide. And so we'll look at that in a couple of our customers in Lindsay Scoggins, uh, where the focus is really going to be around those uh, photorealistic 2D images, which is, of course, very much a requirement when you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on an engagement ring. Uh, we'll look at Bamford watches, um, which is going to be primarily a 3D use case, um, and the, the amount of permutations and configurability there, it's at a level where photography and even photo editing, things like, like Photoshop, um, just wouldn't be sustainable to really visualize all of those configurations or combinations. Um, and lastly, there is some conversation around engraving, uh, so we'll throw uh, a fun customer of ours in the name of custom fantasy rings in there as well, and so we'll try to hustle through these in about the next 10 minutes or so. So starting with Lindsay Scoggins, uh, the idea for Lindsay is that she's sorry, creating these bespoke custom engagement rings. Uh, and once upon a time, she would sit in her studio with her potential clients and actually sketch out those, those rings by hand. So what we've done here is kind of uh, set up a very simple little configurator. I've got a few different steps here where I wanna start by selecting my actual center stone and what that what the shape of that stone will be and over on the right hand side we have again kind of trying to to, to replicate that experience of Lindsay actually sketching these these rings out for her clients so as i move my way through you can see i've got a little library here of my five <clears throat> excuse me my five base center stone shapes but i can work my way through and start to build that ring dynamically so i've got my different settings here and again we can see all of those incremental changes occurring over on the right-hand side with my visual. Uh, and at this point, right, we're at, at about a, a half a dozen different components with my center stones, my settings, but then we start adding in my different band styles. And I've got a few more down here with my three phases, my chance has a couple, et cetera. And so at this point, we're already getting into the dozens uh, of, of combinations of how you can actually build these rings. And when I start to incorporate things like metal, we're literally now at hundreds of different combinations of how to construct the, um, the, the engagement ring itself. Uh, but we're able to achieve that and, and visually see that fully constructed or that completed ring uh, with again, just about a dozen component pieces, right? My five main stones, my five, my five uh, uh, setting styles, a few more band styles. And then once I incorporate my three different forms of metals, again, very quickly getting into the hundreds of combinations. And kind of the finished product here is, as we were mentioning, we need to know precisely what that ring is gonna look like in real life, as close to a real life photo as possible. And again, in this case, because we're dealing with so many hundreds of rings, um, by no means is it feasible to manufacture all of those rings. And then of course, go through and actually create photographs of that. So what we have here are digital renderings. So again, we've taken that full configuration 
of all of those individual components, right? Currently I have yellow gold, but maybe we'll go back and uh, maybe we'll change the band style here and maybe we'll swap this over to a rose gold just so we can see again, another, another image there of precisely every single ring that was being configured, but then also giving the customer uh, a little bit of a sense of what is that gonna look like on my hand uh, with a few different skin tones here so we can see that um, uh, that finished engagement ring layered onto uh, what is also a digital render of um, a, a human hand uh, there in the background with a few different um, a few different skin tones. And then lastly, always allowing the user to go back to that uh, very immersive kind of interactive 3D experience where we can start to spin and, and zoom the finished ring. Uh, so moving on to the next example here. Hey, Tony, before you move on. Oh, yes, please, think, John. I just think it's, you know, I've been doing it, like I said, a long, long time. The, the beauty of this is not only the way it looks, but the simplicity of how you use it, right? I can put that in the hand of any associate, either online or in store, and make that, and I think that took you about 45 seconds, right? And then I'm assuming I can take that picture, send it off to my 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 wife, exactly. my girlfriend, my mother, like whatever it is, as an, as a customer, and and then come back and make other changes, right? Uh, John, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's per perfect. Yeah, th thank you so much. I mean, I mean, I I, I kind of take that for granted because I, I kind of live and breathe configurators all day. Um, but the the ease of use, the intuitiveness uh, of the configuration, right? You certainly don't want to overwhelm your customers with too many options. Um, uh, you, know, you want it to be performant and very reactive and very responsive. They don't want to sit around um, and, and wait for the screen to load as you make these changes. So everything ha is happening incrementally and dynamically. And as you said, John, great call outs. Uh, I mean, it's um, uh, a, a no, almost a no brainer kind of, kind of walkthrough and user experience. So uh, thanks for um, uh, calling attention to that. Um, we'll, we'll move over to uh, custom fantasy rings, which is, um, Tony, uh, quick question. There's a, yeah. uh, what file types does your platform accept? And does your platform expor export files as well from manufacturing, 3D, print, or CNC? Sure, sure, yeah. Let's start with the second one. The answer is yes. Uh, so we can export to uh, a number of different file types. We can always integrate to, um, uh, to, other, to other platforms to get that manufacturing detail. Uh, cuts, descriptions, widths, properties, um, uh, whatever elements are required, we can export all of that data out. As far as inputs, um, I mean, really any, any file type that's out there. Um, three kit, we're not in the business of forcing people onto the three kit platform. Uh, so if you're using any other type of um, uh, design, uh, design application, uh, 3D application, CAD system, um, uh, three kit can, can talk to those models. Uh, so moving on to uh, to custom fantasy rings. Thank you, Mark. Um, uh, the the idea here with custom fantasy rings was not to uh, have a, a, a photorealistic perfect image uh, of a ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollar engagement ring, uh, because what custom fantasy rings is doing, they're selling. Um, uh, it's it's like a trophy, right? So so you win your um, your league your league with your coworkers or your friends of fantasy football. And you want to be able to just have a, a, a nice little token, uh, token gesture here. And so what um, uh, Custom Fantasy was primarily concerned with was going to be the engraving. So as I work my way uh, around this ring here, I'm going to come into my inside of the ring here. Not sure how well we can see that over the zoom, right? But whatever, um, you know, maybe we want to put the, uh, the name in here, get one for Mark. <laughs> right, so we can actually uh, uh, start to see uh, uh, directly into that 3D. But the one thing to call out here is notice also the curvature of it. Right, so this is not a, a, a series of letters that we're superimposing onto a flat 2D image, but we want to actually see how are those letters going to look when we engrave it into the physical ring itself. And because we're applying this to an actual 3D model, that's how we can retain the curvature and actually get a, a good sense of how that engraving is going to look on the finished products. But then I come around to the side of my ring. We'll go ahead and stick with three kit here. Uh, but as I do that, I type it pretty quickly. Notice also kind of that auto, um, auto sizing, auto downsizing. Uh, so as I work my way through and kind of fill in that canvas, but what we're looking at here is from a ring standpoint, uh, I have all of these targetable zones. Uh, so what that means is I can start to configure my ring, uh, target each unique area. Uh, but also as I do this, uh, you also notice that my, uh, my lettering here, it's not an engraving into the band of the ring, but we're actually applying more metal 
So we want the engraving to actually match the, the textures, the surfaces, the roughness, kind of those tactile elements of where we're gonna put that lettering. And just to uh, kind of finish off that example, uh, even if we were to uh, right, change those materials, uh, we're gonna want to see the, not just the ring itself change, but also the, you know, the, the text or the, um, uh, the decals, et cetera, that I want to add onto, <clears throat> add onto the, the, the finished ring. And then lastly, That's cool. um, I was I was I was just I was going to say uh, uh, so even though they've moved to Las Vegas, I, I actually uh, live in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, so I've been an Oakland Raider fan forever. Uh, so that's why I always like to finish this one here on the Oakland colors. Uh, but if we wanted to, we could even start to um, uh, you know really black this out here with um, uh, you know changing my stone colors. Um, we can change it to something a little bit more. Um, uh, I guess loud, so we can really clearly see that uh, uh, that change in uh, again these kind of targetable zones. Um, so, so wanted to, to share custom fantasy just very quickly, really to emphasize the uh, the engraving. I know we've only got a few minutes left to look at the last customer example. Uh, Mark, in the meanwhile, any questions that have come in before we uh, spend the, the the next couple of minutes on Bamford? Does it export to OBJ or STL? Those three kids. Um, oh. OBJ today, STL, um, we haven't had the use case, but it absolutely could be added. Um, but uh, OBJ, FBX, a couple other file types are, are on there. Uh, we can import STLs, no problem. Um, so the last one I wanted to, uh, to share is gonna be Bamford, um, uh, Bamford watch. Again, this is one where the personalization of these watches is such that similar to, uh, to Lindsay Scoggins even and, and the few hundred or so engagement rings, uh, there's certainly no way to manufacture them. There's no way to take images of those, take pictures of those or create images. Uh, and the configurability is, is very similar to kind of what we've been seeing, right? So I have my, my leather strap or the band of the watch. I have the dial, I have the bezel and all of the, the arms and, and elements inside of there. Uh, but if I go to, for example, my leather strap uh, from a user experience standpoint, this going back to, to John's earlier uh, call out is again, very simple. I can see with icons exactly what I'm going to be configuring. And from um, an option standpoint, you'll notice I'm not overwhelming the user with every single option possible. It's only as I work my way through that configuration, do we then want to present the additional options. So I've got a few different uh, uh, stitch color options. We can see just how granularly we can target the individual components or pieces that make up that watch. Uh, but then also notice some of the um, uh, more discrete elements like going from rubber to leather or even to this uh, kind of canvas strap, right? And really wanting to accentuate all of those um, elements of texture and kind of those tactile elements that are going to contribute to uh, making an ultimate purchasing decision here. You know, Tony, just um, to jump in with it, nothing that's really cool about this is you move that watch, I can see the light reflecting off the crystal, <laughs> right? Yeah, great call. Yep, absolutely. And, and just another thing, you know, you mentioned that, or maybe it was Mark uh, earlier in the introductions, right? The, the way the light is, is kind of refracting through um, the, the gemstones of that first engagement ring example that we looked at, or just kind of reflecting off of the glass versus the metal versus the rubbers. Uh, and again, kind of giving that uh, real, um, uh, real life experience um, uh, and preview of, of how that's going to behave in real life. Uh, but now I just wanted to uh, uh, very quickly you know, run, run through all these different dial options. And again, but most of it uh, has to do with color, but just really the granularity of what I can do here, uh, right? And even starting to, to target the, um, uh, the hands of the watch versus the, versus the dial itself, uh, all of the um, uh, individual markings on the dial. So again, here we're literally getting into the... Um, uh, the you know hundreds and thousands and, and millions of permutations we've got customers uh, who are configuring products into the billions and there's even some customers into the quintillions uh, not quite sure how many zeros quintillion is um, uh, but by setting up all of these different kind of targetable zones right the dozens or hundreds of options that can be selected for each of those targetable zones uh, you can see how those permutations really begin to add up um, uh, really exponentially um, so with a, a, a configuration of this sort, uh, you know, really being able to support that scalability uh, of visualization of all of those different personalizations and 
combinations. Uh, the last thing, I'm not going to actually do this here, but they're all live pets on our website. So we're, we're happy to send all of these links out. Uh, if you haven't already gone to, um, uh, to, to, your, to your other browser and, and type in these customers, uh, but there's also some engraving here um, for, for the Bamford watch. Um, but with that, uh, Mark, if there are no other questions, maybe we'll, we'll pass it back to, uh, to John. And Great stuff, Tony. Rolling. Yeah. Thanks very much. Let's hand it over to the uh, Proximity Insight team. Uh, let's let's handle through. I think they've got some great content on, you know, how to make an even richer customer experience with things like clientele and interacting with customers, you know, associates online. Yeah, thank you, Mark. First, Proximity Insight. We are a global software company that has built a clienteling solution that's supporting brands in over a dozen countries with their all unique customer experiences. Whether a brand has one or hundreds of stores, our solution allows associates to connect with customers on a personal level. And clienteling has many different definitions, but for us at the end of the day, it's all about connecting people together through technology. We saw in the last year, people reacting to COVID, needing the ability to virtually sell, whether it's going to be connecting through a live chat, engaging with the service team, whether downloading Calendly and connecting Zoom to have some sort of uh, virtual experience and putting a face to that associate and the customer. But what's happening is that these are all point solutions and they're not connected together. And people aren't able to see the metrics or the success of them. Next slide, please. And we know that when people are connected together and when somebody is shopping, that the ability to upsell, the ability to cross sell, the ability to build a basket together really uh, happens when people are connecting, sharing stories of why they're making this, this uh, purchase. We know in jewelry that when making a decision on an engagement ring, it can take some time and we'll touch base a little bit on that. But essentially, if you're able to connect with people, you can build baskets. And if they already know who you are, the response rate through emails or text messages are significantly higher than doing anything with automated marketing. So personal is powerful. But what's like that in the jewelry space? Next slide, piece. So our jewelry customers see these types of metrics. And if you could have your customers engaging with you, whether it comes to making a purchase, whether it comes to maybe polishing or just following up and maybe seeing if they're ready to make that purchase for a new watch, a new ring, or a special treat for someone, it, it, this is what we're, we're all about. And let's bring this to life. You know, Jared, if you want to pop over and take over the screen, we're actually going to walk you through this intimate customer experience and show you how we're able to connect through all these different channels and making sure everything is personal and meeting what the customer is looking forward to. So, Jared, are you, there we go. Great, thanks Rob. I should be sharing screen now, assume that's all good. So, hello to everyone. I'm very much looking forward to walking you through uh, demo functionality today. And I'm gonna do that in the form of a customer journey, which really shows this partnership uh, between ourselves and 3Kit and how we can enrich that customer experience through 3Kit's product visualization and, and AR tools and our connected retail solutions. So let me just set the scene here. We've got a customer, Amelia. She's on our website here, which is a, a poor man's version of what uh, the 3Kit team have just been showing us here. The important thing to note here is that we've got our product configurator down the bottom. So Amelia has been browsing a website She's interested in an engagement ring, this, uh, this ring that we're looking at here. She's maybe done some configuration. She wants to change this to her birthstones across the board here. So we're gonna go uh, all rubies and change this up to gold. I won't spend too much time here. We know from uh, the demo the team have just given us that we can, um, we've got a number of different options here. Again, the way that the light bounces off those jewels is really important. But Amelia is uh, happy with her design, but she's got some questions. She wants to talk to somebody. As John alluded to before, that personalization, um, the tailored personalized experience is really what customers are after. So she wants to get a couple of her questions answered. So she's gonna pop open the live chat down the bottom here. And she's going to engage in a conversation. And this start of this conversation is then going to send through a message through our routing rules, either to somebody maybe in her local store, maybe to an expert, depending on the, uh, depending on the question, we may be sending this through to customer service. It may be going to a you know, a particular store associate or a brand ambassador so we can pass those conversations off to the right people to ensure that the conversation is dealt with by the best person. 
All right. So, okay. go for Rob. Yeah. So, as Jared is starting this conversation, we know the importance of this because people who just shop on the website might just be looking for the most discounted item. And the conversion rates for a good website has between one to 2%. When, as soon as you start chatting, you're now able to increase that conversion from two to 4%. And when we're getting to the video chat aspect, we'll actually see that jump up to 10 and 15%. But John, question for you, when you're shopping through, what's even this journey like when it comes to an engagement ring and how important is it to quickly respond to the customer? Well, you know, there's a lot here and this is really interesting because I love the fact that you guys set this up with Amelia going on and starting, right? Chances are Amelia is not buying her own engagement ring. She's going to hand it off to someone else to buy it. Um, and what we find typically is that the journey, the intent port portion, when the woman starts looking for her ring is sometimes years ahead of when the relationship is at a point to actually, to actually make the purchase. For men, they're three, four months before, which is still a long time but there's that connectivity that becomes extremely important. And so as she's out there and she's building off this ring, capturing that information, responding quickly, and then being able to get that information to the person who will ultimately buy it becomes really important. So he gets it right. Yeah. And right now what we're actually seeing here is that Amelia wants to hop on and do a video chat. So we see the link yeah. that's being clicked on. And then Jared is now going to fire up on his side with his iPad, uh, this in, in communication. So yep. what's yeah, so yeah, I've, sent the link. I've sent the link to the customer. At this point in time, um, it's an anonymous conversation. Obviously we've got a, a fairly brief conversation here where the customer has some questions. We've offered to escalate this to a more personal approach, having a face-to-face -face video conversation. And so I've sent that off to Amelia. And so I'm gonna jump now from the view of the customer to the view of the store associate. And let me just refresh my page here. So uh, I should have Amelia should have uh, received that link. So we can see here, here's the other side of that conversation that we've had back and forth with our anonymous customer. And I'm just gonna open up the video call link that I sent the customer. And hopefully Amelia's there with us. I'll just turn down the volume there. Hi Amelia. There's Amelia, great. So now Rob, did you wanna add some, add some uh, context here? Sure. So as John was mentioning before, we're now actually putting a face to a face. We can now see the customer Amelia interacting with Jared. And as Jared is doing this, you could also fire up the product configuration. So we see that right now he's pulling up the, uh, the catalog. And as he's doing this, he could actually share the screen with Amelia or Amelia could actually share her screen if she's on the website and they could start building and configuring this uh, product. So how important is this, John, you know, being able to, how many questions are here typically when it comes to putting together an engagement ring? Yeah, I mean, hundreds. What was so interesting, and I think probably everyone on the call felt this, and, you know, Jared, you said it, this is an anonymous customer. It was anonymous until Amelia popped up on the screen. Now, I've been in sales a long time. I immediately had to engage her. I smiled. She smiled back. We waved. The entire interaction now has changed, right? And when you're, when, you're, when you're trying to build an engagement ring for someone, understanding that emotional connection, what's really important to her, you, can't, you can get it to a certain degree through texting, but if you can get them on a call or get them, and I can see her face, and I can see how she's reacting, that's magical. Um, so well done. Millie, do you love the ring? Yeah. Um, so can you hear me? Maybe she can you, can't hear me. She's on mute. <laughs> thumbs up, good we smile. We see the thumbs up. We see the thumbs up and continuing. Let's say now after this video virtual consultation is done, Amelia actually wants to schedule an appointment and bring yeah. bring her boyfriend into the store, or maybe she wants to even have a way of sharing this with her friends and family, with her you know soon to be fiance maybe, or with the with the other person's family. Yeah, great. Thanks, Rob. So. Uh, Amelia, thank you. Glad we could answer all your questions today. I'm gonna to hang up the call now. So um, yeah, we've, we've assumed that we've answered all of the customer's questions. We've obviously built some rapport with the customer because uh, you know, we've answered all of her questions. We've had that very personal engagement. And now uh, Amelia wants to be able to share that configuration, that design that we've created with her partner, you know, with her friends, with her mother. So what I'm gonna do here is just send her 
uh, a little follow-up communication. So I've pre-created here in the interest of time, a little piece of content and we'll just preview that here. So we've got our branding up the top. I've contextualized the follow-up text, um, you know, saying it was great to talk to you. Glad we could answer your questions. Uh, I've inserted a link to that custom configuration that we uh, created together. You can see I've got a, a picture of that configuration down the bottom there. And now I'm gonna be able to send this to Amelia so that she can share that with her friends and family. And she can do that through, uh, I, can, I can either drop this into an email, I can drop this into an SMS or a social channel such as you know, WhatsApp or, or Facebook Messenger. Uh, that way we can communicate with the customer in the channels that they wanna be communicated to. But the piece of content that I'll send is actually a microsite. So we've created an individualized piece of content that we can share with that specific customer that she can then share with her friends. Maybe she wants to make some configuration changes. She's decided that you know, she wants to change the middle stone to a, to a diamond or something like that. She can easily go in and make that configuration change herself there. And Jared, so, well, I also heard, or I think Rob said it, we have the option at that point also to make an appointment with her right online, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, following on from that, Rob, I'm not sure whether you dropped, we've actually got this link to this piece of content that we'll drop into, uh, yeah. into the chat so people can actually open up this piece of content themselves. And then within the body of the text there, you'll see the, the link with the underline. If you click on that, that'll take you directly to that configurator that I showed you before. So we're assuming we've sent this across to Amelia. She's uh, obviously happy that we've, um, she's got that design that we created together. And now she wants to come in and actually book an appointment. It'd be nice to be able to do that face-to-face -face one day. So I'm gonna assume at some point in the near future that we can do that. And so I just wanted to quickly jump across to appointment booking. So on the very same platform, customer can uh, book themselves an appointment. Uh, Amelia is based out of New York here. So she's gonna select her store. We've got different appointment types here. Again, that might be a uh, you know, a repair appointment, it might be a virtual appointment, it may be an in-store appointment, which is what I'm going to select. Customer selects the time and date, which works for them. And I'm just going to quickly pre-fill my details here. So we can have a dynamic customer capture form here. Again, depending on the, the type of appointment, maybe if this is a, a jewelry clean uh, or a servicing appointment, we may want to put some additional fields here for the customer to list uh, maybe if something's broken or what the piece of jewelry is, so we know exactly what it is that this appointment's about. And then we can confirm that appointment here at the end. It's just such a clear next steps for customers. I mean, A, it's an amazing way to engage them. But then it's the, the thing that really gets me is, hey, this is a super clear next step for you, Miss Customer or Mr. Customer is, hey, here's what we're going to do next. Here's the email. Here's the next meeting link. And, you know, just thinking of anyone in sales and I, you know, talking with our sales team a lot, it is so crucial that every time you're on the call with a prospect that, Hey, book in that next meeting. And that, that, just that little thing is so important. And this, this technology use case here with proximity gives you that, Hey, it's simple. Here's the next steps for you prospect, uh, prospective buyer. So I love that. That's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mark. So yeah, we talked about that personalization piece, but also uh, some additional power of our platform is those customer journeys that we would configure um, enables you to have a, a list of automated tasks that drop into your, your to-do list or your inbox. So you don't need to keep a black book. You don't need to keep detailed notes around conversations that you had and who's been in for an appointment, who's made a purchase, when is Amelia's engagement party. I can get a follow-up in three weeks time to say, hey, Amelia's engagement party was yesterday follow up with her and you know find out how jealous all her girlfriends were with her new engagement ring. Um, so I just wanna, I just wanna close the loop here uh, on this. So we've assumed that Amelia's booked herself an appointment. She's come in, she's already built some rapport with me. We've had that text conversation. We had that video call. We've been engaging back and forth over WhatsApp or, or email or whatever it may be. So I already feel like I know Amelia and Amelia is comfortable with me. So she brings her, her partner into the store. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly close out the, the transaction here. So going back to the product, I won't go through the product configuration piece, but assume that we, we got that configuration, we can then add the item to the cart and check that out. And we've gone from the customer, uh, you know, coming to our website for the first time, maybe liking a piece of jewelry, having some questions, not really knowing if they wanna keep the conversation going. We've helped them out. We've connected the right person to them through the channels that they wanna be communicated to. We've answered all their questions. 
We've allowed them to uh, self-serve, book themselves an appointment, do some ring configuration themselves. They've come into the store. We've already built that rapport. We've had a very tailored, personalized experience as John's alluded to before, which is very important. And uh, that's allowed us to uh, continue the conversation with the customer. So that's it from me. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen here. Yep. And if uh, Svetla, if you want to bring up the PowerPoint and we'll get to the closing and we'll also open up for anything on questions. Yeah. Thank you, Jared. That was really interesting to see. So um, let's do a little bit of Q&A before we wrap up. Let's see. Um, Tony, this is a question for you, I think. Are there any limits on the number of materials that you can support? Uh, there, there's literally no technical limitation, uh, maybe a practical one. Uh, you gotta keep it, keep it manageable, but uh, no, there's technically no limitation. It's felt I want to just add one thing to what I saw with Jared and with Mark. I kind of alluded to it with Mark, but um, technology is a wonderful thing, provided the team chooses to use it, and they will choose to use it if it benefits them and it's easy to use, right? And in both cases, you can see that the UI is rich, it's easy, it's simple. Uh, you don't need to have a giant instruction manual. And so you can hand what Jared just did to really any associate, and they can navigate it very easy. Uh, and you will then see tremendous user adoption and effectiveness because of that. So bravo to, to whoever designed the front end. Nice. And do you need to understand CAD to maintain three kits? No. You do not need to understand CAD. Uh, we have a number of customers with zero hands-on knowledge of 3D modeling, CAD, CAD engineering. Um, and so from, a, from an administrative standpoint, I am by no means a, a 3D artist um, and, I, and I work inside of three kits uh, uh, every day. So from a, from a world standpoint, from a configuration standpoint, from a maintenance standpoint, um, you, can, you can set that up with basic three kit training and that does not require any 3D or CAD knowledge. Um, I think this one is for Proximity Insight. How, how quick is it to implement your technology? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it, it could be very fast. We've done implementations uh, within three weeks to get up and running. You know, it depends on what the focus is for uh, a customer or a brand. For example, people might want to have appointments right away or people want to have that live chat widget to start interacting or then configuring and showing the whole profile view to, to show what's in the, the store and knowing the, the full view of the customer. So as quick as three weeks, we've done them. Great. So I think that is all the questions. I'm gonna go ahead and next slide. Rob, would you like to just wrap it up? Yeah, of course. So at, at the end of this webinar, what we need to take away is there's so many different types of customers out there. And what 3Kit is able to do is there, there's, there's a customer who wants to go onto the website and they wanna do this whole personalization. They wanna make this product on their own in a very easy uh, way. As Mark mentioned before, 80% of the people wanna see what it looks like. and in in a place where now it's difficult to go into a store or maybe even have a chance to actually see it with your hands, they bring it right there and then, right? And you could see what it is and you could have that confidence. Like John said before, you're able to see how the light is hitting it and providing it on the, on the sparkle. And then you have different types of customers as well who want to, who have questions, who want to know how it's made, where is it coming from, who want to have their hand held. And our technology together is very easy to configure and work together to provide what these types of customers want. You know, like I said before, there's, John mentioned there's an older segmented group that are now texting and scheduling virtual appointments. And this is what's happening. This is what's going on into the world. And then you might have people who just wanna browse and do the whole experience by themselves. So there's no way, there's no linear uh, journey when it comes to, to buying. And take that away and just think of it. Are you able to give a consistent experience across all your channels for all the different personas to help them get to that final and most important decision as, as a company to close and, and make that purchase? So feel free to scan a, a, the QR codes below if you want to get more information from 3Kit. You know, you reach out with them and have another great visualization to work on your use case. And also feel free to, to scan ours. And at the end, we could also work and help your your uh, problems together. And really, again, 
make the ultimate virtual selling experience. And thank you everyone for the questions and for your time today. Thank you, everyone. We will be sending out the recording later today, so look out for that. And we, uh, it will also include links to schedule demos with both 3Kit and Proximity. And have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you, John. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jared, Amelia, Kathy. Great stuff. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Take care.